So do your watercolor paintings look like this? and you are hoping and wishing that they could look more like this, well, I am here to help. So it's Dina Tollefson and I am so glad that you are here today. Be sure to watch all the way to the end because I'm sharing with you some super valuable tips that you as a painter are not going to want to miss. So this first technique I want to share with you is called the wet in wet technique and it's a fantastic technique. I use it in pretty much all of my watercolor paintings. So let me show you. So in the wet and wet technique, we can apply the color, for example, directly on top of existing color that's already wet and it will travel. Or we can put it, for example, side by side and allow this organic and special blending to happen. Uh, we, can, we can let the paper dry a little bit more and then we can add it on top. So let's Go ahead and add, for example, if we add a swipe of yellow and we can allow the green, we can get different shapes. Now let me show you how I use the wet and wet technique on our Kill Bill Toucan. And then here's where that fun part comes in when the wet and wet technique is used here. So watch well, I'll, I'm gonna drop this Windsor Yellow Deep right on top and let these colors kind of organically blend. Now Windsor and Newton Permanent Magenta. I'm being super careful to not add too much water so I have controlled blending. This painting of the Keel Build Toucan is for the Favorite Bird Art Challenge that I'm hosting here on my YouTube channel and please be sure to watch all the other artists' entries into the challenge and show them some love. So uh, we've got Windsor & Newton Prussian Blue on dry watercolor paper and when this blue is still damp, I'm going to come in with a wet and wet technique to make his wings with some Holbein neutral tint. Or we could go in and we could surround, for example, the color. This is on the damp paper. See how that color all travels? The color is only going to travel where the paint is, or where the paper is wet. So if I put it on dry paper, do you see that we get a blending here of the where the wet edge is? Here, if the paper was wet, the paint is wet, then we get complete blending. And now over here, I'll just demonstrate for you what happens if we put, for example, almost dry paper and then we put some wet on top of that. Kiel Bill Toucans have a fantastic bill. They're made of keratin, which is interesting. It's, uh, it's actually very similar to our fingernails. So I want to play up this colorful part in the bird. I want this to be the focal part of my painting. So I'm going to be adding Windsor & Newton, Windsor Orange in wet and wet on top of the, the paper. So the paper's slightly damp underneath. And now the colors, you'll see how the colors spread in this beautiful way, um, like the bill of the bird. And you can see this wet and wet technique of dropping color on top of already wet paper. It's a fantastic way to add drama to your work. And the more wet your paper is, the more your color's going to spread. So that's um, it's an important key to know. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush and dry it and grab a little bit of Windsor & Newton Red for more of the wet and wet. And this time, the Permit Magenta, it's almost dry uh, so that the color is going to have a soft edge. It's not going to travel too much, but it's still technically uh, wet and wet. Now technique number two I want to share with you is called glazing. So glazing is putting wet paint on top of dry paint and that's different than the wet on wet where both of the pieces were wet, either the paper was wet or the, or the paint next to it was wet. This is where you start with dry and you put wet on top. And you can use the same color on the top as you have below or you can put a new color on the top uh, at, from what you had below and you can create these really kind of wonderful color effects. Okay, so let me show you. So uh, here is the glazing technique. And so it's uh, wet paint on top of dry paint. Ultramarine blue again here. And here is our, whoops, I have a little bit of blue mixed in there by mistake. Okay, I didn't have my brush all the way clean. Okay, here's yellow and we'll get yellow on this side. And then let's paint also, what if we have a yellow here? Okay, so um, what we'll do is we're going to let this totally dry. So now we have a, f a fully dry painting here. So 
I'm going to go in uh, with the same color. So we have this Windsor and Newton uh, yellow, the Windsor yellow, and I'm going to lay this on top of our dry uh, ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue, and you can see this kind of wonderful nuanced yellowy green that is created. But I can also take this yellow and deepen the color that deepen the color that's already on here by just adding more of that same color. Now what if I just do a little bit of the color over the top of what we have? You can see these um, wonderful effects that we can make. Now let's try and put the blue over the yellow in this one. Let's try that and let's see what we can get. So if we put the blue over the top of the yellow, see we get a little different effect. We get more of the blue showing. And then on this one, let's go ahead and just see what happens if we put uh, blue on one side, and then let's put yellow on the other side. So we'll do a combination of glazing and wet and wet. And let's get an effect with that. So let's just get yellow next to that and then watch that color. So we're gonna get a merging of the two colors. We're gonna get a layering of the two colors. So now let me show you how I used this glazing technique on our Keeled Bill Toucan. So this yellow breast and the black feathers of our toucan are completely dry. And I'm now gonna glaze with this Windsor & Newton New Gamboge and uh, layering the wet paint on top of the dry paint. Using a new color on the top, it's just gonna make a hybrid color where we can get some of that yellow, the original yellow uh, showing through. And, and depending on how transparent or opaque the paint is that you're using, um, that'll determine what kind of coloring you're gonna get on the top. Okay, so now you can see me glazing the same color on top, and that's just gonna deepen the color. And did you notice that when I first painted the back of our toucan, um, the, that color black, it looked really dark like this is. Uh, so watercolor will tend to dry lighter in color, so you have to keep that in mind. And if you want to achieve a rich, deep color, um, the technique to do is this glazing where you layer one color just up on top of the other. Um, so you could also just use super thick paint but it's not gonna give you that luminous layered look. It's gonna just kinda sit like blah on the top. And did you notice that with this technique, the paint stays exactly where, with this glazing, it stays exactly where I'm putting it on the paper. So that's the one big difference between wet on wet and glazing. With wet and wet, the paint that you add will travel on your wet paper. But here with glazing, uh, the paper and the color below are totally dry, so the color is only going to go where your paintbrush tells it to go. I was able to create some nice feather effects here with glazing uh, that neutral tint over the dried Prussian blue. All right, technique three I want to share with you is called lifting. But before we get into this technique, I want to ask, would you do me a favor and would you please bop that like button and ring-a-ding the subscription bell? I have a lot of fun content for you. I don't want you to miss. I also have some new art challenges that you might be interested in, in joining in on, and these art challenges are a lot of fun. So lifting is where you have your painting and then you are removing the top layer of color or layers of color. You can go all the way down to the white of the paper if you have a non-staining color, or uh, you can leave some kind of nuanced uh, little shadow effect. So let me show you. So the lifting technique can be a lifesaver if you have paint where you don't want it to be or you just maybe even want to add a highlight. So there are a lot of different ways to do a lift and I'm gonna demonstrate you three ways. There's a paintbrush method, a Q-tip method, and an eraser method. So uh, one note is that your paper has to be bone dry, super duper dry to do this technique properly. Otherwise you might tear your paper and you definitely don't want to do that. So the paper here in uh, this watercolor journal is, I don't know, maybe a 70, 80, 90 pound paper, something like that. The paper that I'm painting um, our toucan on is a 140 pound cold pressed paper from Arches. 
So, um, so let's talk first about using the paintbrush method. So what I'll do is I'll show you. I've just got a little bucket of water here, and I have pre-painted this and let it totally dry before we start. So we'll get the Q-tips and Mr. Eraser out of the way. And I've got just a little stack of clean cloth here. But how this works is you just dip your brush in the water and then you apply it uh, where you want to lift your color, where you want to remove your color. And then it's a matter of going in just in the area where you've gotten it wet and clean your brush. If you've got different colors, be sure to clean your brush in between. But it's just a matter of going through and lifting that color off or removing that color. So you'll notice also you have to be careful when you're removing or when you're lifting that you can get a hard edge right here. Like for example, I'm getting a hard edge um, where I'm lifting my color off and where the color remains. But uh, that's okay, we can deal with that. You can either leave a hard edge if you wanted a hard edge or you can go back in later and blend and soften that edge. Now this French ultramarine is a non-staining color, so you'll notice that we can get all the way back into our whites easily with this particular color. Do that as much as you want. There we go. All right, so the next method here is the Q-tip method. And this is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, what I like about the Q-tip method is that you can get some really nice control uh, when you do this. Just dipping the Q-tip in water, but I can get a nice sharp edge. See, it's a little bit uh, more narrow than the um, more narrow than the brush, and I can really decide and pick what areas I'm going to lift with. But that Q-tip method is really super effective at lifting. Look how quickly that works. Where we really had to kind of, um, um, with the brush, we had to really kind of work on it for quite a while. The Q-tip, if you apply a little bit of pressure as you're working on it, it also helps with lifting. And you can turn and then get the clean area and just lift it. All right. so. This is the lifting with the Q-tip method. So this last method um, for lifting is an eraser method. You can really use any kind of eraser that you like. When you do this, the color will come off on the eraser itself. And again, super dry paper. I'm just gonna take a brush and brush off the eraser crumbs. There we go. But this is the eraser method, super subtle. Okay, so let me show you how I use this lifting technique on our Keel Build Toucan. So the lifting technique, it's great if you want to add a highlight without using paint, or maybe you made a boo-boo on your paper and you want to get rid of it and get a clean edge. But I use the lifting technique with a paintbrush here at the top of our bird's head in a few places where I had a little bit too much neutral tint and it, it was a little too dark. So I like that effect of leaving a trace of the neutral tint uh, for some nuanced color. I'm using the eraser method here, uh, lifting for a super subtle reflected highlight on our bird's beak, on that leading edge of the bird's beak. Now in this section of the beak, I'm gonna be using the, the more aggressive and more controlled Q-tip method, because I wanna be able to lift a large amount of color, but have control at the same time. So just using that Q-tip and uh, using a clean one each time and alternating between the clean and the damp. Dipping into the water and using a clean Q-tip that's not, it's, it's damp but it's not totally wet because we don't want to disturb the surrounding paint area. And I'm going to keep going until I've removed as much color as I want here. So again, if it's a non-staining color, you can get all the way back to the white of the paper um, if, if you, that's what you desire. Do you see that nice soft edge on the highlight? So if I had used masking fluid here, I'd have a hard edge to deal with. And uh, that's why I prefer to use a lifting method rather than masking fluid. So this is really an iterative process between laying on color and taking off the color uh, that you don't want until you get the final result. So I hope that you have enjoyed this Keel Build Toucan demonstration and I hope that you'll also leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. 
So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye.